Sup geeks, welcome back! It's Yu-Gi-Oh! time and I'm going to be making Wind Dragon of Ra, one of the three Egyptian gods that led Pharaoh Yami Yugi to his final victory. This is such a majestic creature with such a beautiful design, so let's see how I transform this card into a doll. Also, this is a collaboration between my two friends Doll Motion, Characters Factory and me. They made the other two Egyptian gods Lifer the Sky Dragon and Obelisk the Tormentor. Be sure to share their beautiful creations as well. This is the concept art I made for my doll. I wanted to transform Dragon Ra into an armor, very sleek, glamorous, just because you can be powerful and fierce at the same time. I'm going to use Starfire from DC Superhero Girls because she's already yellow and it will save a lot of work later. And I'm making a hybrid doll using Cleo Denial Head because I want her to look very Egyptian. First, I need to modify a little bit the hole on the head so it can fit the thick DC girl neck. This is kinda tricky because you can easily ruin the head, so be careful. And here she is. She looks a bit weird because the color difference, but I'm gonna fix that later. So, it's time to start working on the armor, and I'm using a epoxy to sculpt all the details directly onto the doll's body. In the beginning, I was thinking about making an actual removable armor, but I really want her to look like in my concept, very stylized, and I've seen that dolls' armor, even if they are very well made, they're kinda bulky, and that was not how I want her to look. I really want her to look very elegant, and ethereal, and sophisticated, like the armor fits her perfectly. I can say I want her to look like she is the armor herself, like it's truly a part of her own body, so yeah, let's go for it. You'll see me here sculpting like crazy fast, and it might give you the impression that I made everything in just a couple of hours, but no, this actually took me some days. I need to sculpt small areas and wait for it to cure in about 4 or 5 hours. Once fully cured, I can move on to another small area. The thing is, I need to wait because if I don't do it, I could easily destroy all my previous work, and no, sculpting directly into a doll's body is not easy at all, so please always take your time and wait for your previous work to dry. It was actually funny that when I shared some teasers of my work in progress on Instagram, some of you guys thought I was making Devora from Mortal Kombat, but let me clarify this. I love Mortal Kombat and most of its characters, but I will never make Devora. The reason? I just hate her. She disgusts me so much, literally, I can't stand her. She looks so gross and annoying. Of course, I might be biased because she kills two of my favorite characters in the franchise, which are Melina and Scorpion. I know, no one truly dies in Mortal Kombat, but anyways, how dare her? During all this sculpting process, I use a water spray bottle to always wet and smooth the surface. This might help later when the sanding process starts. Seamless transitions are really difficult to make and it always requires practice and patience. And once we finish the heels, we're almost done with the body modifications. For the nails, I'm using a very easy and basic technique. I'm just using foam and then I'm going to hot glue them onto each finger. I want her hands to look very fierce and feminine, and that's why I didn't sculpt actual clothes. Always remember that this will have a complete solid color and that will help to make all these different pieces and materials cohesive. The headpiece was a challenge, not because of the sculpture itself, 
but because of its design change from one art to another and it looks so different in every illustration I was taking inspiration from. So I decided to fuse them all in one and make this helmet that at the same time it kind of resembles the head of the winged dragon. I'm placing what it will be the blue gem that each of the gods have on their heads. Once it's fully cured, after 6 hours we can finally remove it. I will be using yellow foam to make the tassets. Yeah, I had to look for the name of these protectors plague things on the hips and they are called tassets. With super light earth dry clay, I'm making a border to the tassets so they won't look so plain. Sometimes small details like this one can make a huge difference. I also sculpt all these beautiful details and I use epoxy for this because I didn't want them to be flexible. Once all the sculpting work is done, I sanded everything so all the surfaces are smooth and the transitions from plastic to epoxy are as seamless as possible. I will be using yellow acrylic paint to conceal the grey color of the epoxy before painting everything gold. This will make the gold painting process so much easier and I will save so much paint. It doesn't have to be perfect because we will be covering everything later but before that step we're going to assemble all these pieces using hot glue. This is starting to look less like a mess and more like my concept and I'm really happy. So now it's time for the moment I've been wearing since I started this doll. Let's paint everything pure gold. I'm using very thin coats cause I don't want the paint to look bulky and full of brush strokes. So that said, I repeat again, coat, way to dry, coat again. Yeah, be patient is the key, but it really pays off. She looks so beautiful, like actual pure gold, oh my gosh, I love her. And now it's time for Winged Dragon of Ra trademark, duh, the wings. I will be using craft foam that I already cut in the shape I wanted and I will also use some wire to give them some stability and also make them possible. So, using hot glue again, I will assemble everything. I truly want this wing to steal the show and make them super dramatic, so I will be adding a lot of details but at the same time, they need to look kind of mechanical because for some reason we Dragon of Ra give the illusion of being a machine despite actually being a god, this part was actually really satisfying to make. And here they are, they feel so lightweighted and now of course we need to make them pure gold. Oh my gosh, I'm really proud of them since this is the very first time I make doll wings and I'm loving the final result. Let's paint the signature blue gem using metallic paint 
And when it's done, it's time to move on to the face up. I already paint the head gold, of course, and let's start adding some diffuse blushing. This time, instead of pastels, I will be using the dry brush technique. Yeah, I won't be using pencils or pastels this time, so it will be a Mr. Super Clear Free Repaint. Only brushes and acrylics. I think the red is perfect to contrast with that golden surface. Once the blushing is done, I will be painting the eyes completely solid red. I want her to look emotionless, like she's not good or evil. She's an other wealthy being lacking of any human emotions. I'm going to outline the eyes with pure gold paint. My inspiration from this repaint is to Tankamen Death Mask. I want it very simple but clearly very Egyptian at the same time. I am outlining again but this time using metallic blue paint. And now I will be drawing the signature Egyptian eyes makeup. I am now highlighting a little bit more using pure gold, just to clean some areas. Once the face up is done, I will use Liquitex High Gloss Varnish to make her eyes glossy like actual gems. And now, it's time to assemble the headpiece and the tassets. And after this, I think we're done. 